What's going on, Port fans? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be discussing a potential trade Port Adelaide could go after at the end of the season. With five rounds to go and multiple scenarios to pan out this year, there is a little bit of myself that would like to start planning for the off-season. How we can attack to prepare for a tilt in 2023. Obviously, 2022 has not gone the way we planned, and it's been a very disappointing season um, barring a few positives that have come our way from individuals, overall it's been a pretty disappointing year. And all of that off-field stuff will be playing out very shortly. And discussions obviously have definitely started uh, behind the scenes to see what we can go after. And I have a potential idea. Brody Grundy. We've seen a lot of discussions talked about Brody Grundy, his massive contract that happened a few years ago. Uh, I think it was a seven-year deal we ended up with. And and there's a lot of money and a lot of baggage that comes with that contract. Now, there's been a lot of talk about Brody Grundy's body and obviously didn't have a great 2021. And his 2022 has been hindered by injury. He's in, in, his, he's in the prime of his career, 28, as a ruckman. You're hitting your strides. We know how good he's been in previous years. And obviously that 2018, 2019 season, he was very, very good. 2020 as well. And we, we know how much um, of, a, of a quality mobile, mobile ruckman he is. And it's something I think Port Adelaide need. And obviously with Lysette coming towards the end of his career and um, certainly been hindered with injury himself, I feel like Scotty Lysette hasn't quite got it in him to take us as a premiership ruckman. Obviously he did that with the West Coast and albeit that was fantastic. And he's provided a great service to Port Adelaide playing in the two prelims. He's been massive um, in 2019 as well. He's been one of those key pillars in our club uh, for a couple of years now, but it's, it's interesting to see where we go with him in terms of a ruck stock. Obviously, we've got Sam Hayes, who hasn't quite come to the party in terms of what we'd like from him personally. And I think his, his movement around the ground is definitely something that he needs to improve on. And whilst we took a punt trading off Peter Laddams, and I know that's going to come back to bite us a little bit, but obviously he hasn't been um, uh, a, a massive get for Sydney, I don't feel, I think. You know, they've had uh, other key pillars really take the rein and, and Laddins hasn't come to the party in that aspect as well. So maybe that was a good move as an isolated trade. But overall, for what we're looking for, a lie set, a, a Sam Hayes is not going to do the trick as a Ruckman come 2023. And this is why I think having someone like Brody Grundy would be a massive, massive pull um, to the footy club. Obviously, Bryn Tika we picked up in the mid-season draft, and it was absolutely fantastic in the quarter that he did play against Sydney before breaking his collarbone. Now, only the best break their collarbones, um, and I really feel like in the future, he's definitely going to play a key part and could learn a lot from, say, someone like a Brody Grundy come um, if, if he does indeed want to pursue an option at Port Adelaide. Same with Dante Vizentini. He's someone that's going to be a long-term project that definitely has shown some promising signs in the Magpies and he has had to play as that number one key ruck multiple weeks um, with, with Sam Hayes making his AFL debut and, and other injuries playing around. Vizantini's done a fantastic job and maybe I feel like it's time now that we um, bring in a, a good primed ruckman. Obviously, we, we haven't really developed a, a key ruckman from its stocks We've always been someone that's really brought in a Ruckman, a Lysette, Paddy Ryder. Lobie took a while to come through and in the end didn't really come off. And and then obviously Jackson Trango for a year and then we brought in Scotty Lysette and all of these things started to play out. And overall in the end, now we're playing with a Dixon and Finlayson combo that uh, is somewhat working, but a key Ruckman is definitely someone I reckon we need to target. Now I mentioned the baggage. This is the key part of this whole trade and how it pans out. Collingwood's list have to have a big call. They've got so many big key players they'd love to sign. The Dugowie, um aspect as well is going to come into play. They've got so many youngsters they'd love to throw in. And this big contract is definitely hindering their opportunity at keeping these key players for a long-term future. Obviously, at the time, you're definitely signing your big key players and you want Grundy there forever. But he obviously hasn't shown that input that they'd like. And they're probably teasing with the call. And obviously... His contract is there. He's staying at Collingwood. That's probably the most, the safest answer I can give you. But the option would be very tempting for Collingwood to pursue an option to send Brody Grundy somewhere else. They would have to pay out a certain percentage of his contract, and I think that would be part of the deal. But that would make him cheap. 
and a Collingwood can't afford to really get something back in their favour because they're looking to apply that somewhere else. So paying out 30, 40% of his contract for what's left, I think it's three years left on his deal, you throw that out and overall it becomes a really a contrasting effect. Would he go somewhere where there's massive opportunity, say Gold Coast with Wits or with uh, GWS, you know, they're light on ruck stocks, or would he come home to South Australia? And obviously we, we teased with the idea of Riley Grundy and, and his opportunity at Port for a couple of years didn't quite work out, unfortunately. And um, I think coming back to South Australia, he wouldn't really go to the Crows because I don't feel like they have uh, the same persuasion or temptation to go. You come to Port Adelaide with a somewhat decent list. They're in their prime. They should be making finals. Obviously, we're not. That's besides the point. But there is a, a, an opportunity here, and there could be a potential for a new coach, a new fresh start for Brody Grundy, and welcoming him would be absolutely fantastic. Now, the negative to this is bringing him in, Bryn Teagle, Scotty Lysette, Sam Hayes, are thinking, well, what about us? You know, I, I, Sam Hayes was given the opportunity, knows what he has to work on to become a better athlete and a footballer. Scott Lysette's coming towards the end and latter stages of his career. Probably has one or two years, maybe even three left in him. Brody Grundy has five or six. And then you look at um, you look at Bryn Tico and you say, mate, you have an opportunity to play alongside Brody Grundy or under his hammer and really learn from his aspects and, and, and see what you can take through it. Dixon's not going to be long. Finn Layson's obviously fresh. Um, and he's 26. He's got Todd Marshall. There's your two key pillars with George Yardis. If you have Bryn Teagle thrown about and, and Brody Grundy, there's an opportunity for a decent mix there. And I really feel like he would bring something to the table. Obviously, a lot would have to work out for Port Adelaide to get Brody Grundy. And I'm not saying we definitely need him. I'm not saying that he's the main target for this offseason. I'm just saying this is a potential idea that I think Port Adelaide should really consider and really question whether it could be worth it. And I'd love to know your thoughts, Port fans, because Brody Gundy would be a quality asset to our ruck stocks and also to our 22. So let me know in the comments below what you're thinking about a potential Brody Grundy trade that uh, trade. Brody Grundy trade that could happen. Thank you for watching this discussion about Brody Grundy for Port Adelaide, a potential trade that could happen at the end of the year. It's just a rumour that I've he heard bits and pieces about behind the scenes and also um, you know, what could happen from the fallout of all this contract talk and Brody Grundy with Collingwood. Um, and, and definitely, it could be something we consider. But let's hear your thoughts, Port fans. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content coming your way for the rest of the year. My name is Anthony, and as always, count the pair.